Our scripture reading today is Psalm 23, and that is on page 862 in your pew Bibles. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his namesake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Most of you have that psalm memorized, don't you? You didn't need to find 862 or wherever in your, your books, or probably didn't even need to look at the screens. You could say it right along with Nancy. That's because many of us have learned this uh, from when we were children. Most of us learned it from the King James Version, so it might read a little bit differently. But It's been said that Psalm 23 is the best loved of all the psalms, but also it's the least believed. I'm sure you've heard many sermons about shepherds and sheep relating to this psalm, and that's certainly appropriate because it does talk a lot about that, and, uh, and we will mention that, and I preach them and we'll preach them again. And many different applications can be made to our Christian lives based on this great theme of, of shepherds and, and sheep. But what I want to talk about today is what I believe the theme of this psalm is really all about, and that is our faith in God's ability to provide for us. And at Thanksgiving, that's a good time to talk about that. Now, we all know someone that whenever there's a crisis or it just doesn't seem like things are going to work out, they'll say something like, the Lord will provide. And you may feel like kind of rolling your eyes and wonder how they, anybody could be so naive as to think that God's just going to fix everything. Well, that is not what is meant by the Lord will provide. Understanding what David meant when he wrote this psalm and believing it means being able to say that no matter what the circumstances, the Lord will provide. If you believe the 23rd Psalm, besides being able to recite it, then here is what you can know that the Lord will provide for you. And on this Sunday before Thanksgiving, it's important for us to consider what the Lord has provided for us and to be sincerely grateful for that provision. The first thing that we see from this Psalm that God provides for us is a lifelong relationship. As verse 1 simply says, The Lord is my shepherd. Now, in his other psalms, David also uses metaphors to describe God and his activity. Most of them are more impersonal, things like uh, that are inanimate, like rock or, or shield or fortress. Or if they are personal, their metaphors are still kind of distant, like king or deliverer. But this description is very personal. The Lord is my shepherd. A shepherd lives with his flock and serves as a guide and as a physician, as a protector, as a companion to the sheep. And God is saying that he is all of this and more to us. Not just is the Lord like a shepherd. He is my shepherd. He lives with me. He guides me. He protects me. He heals me. We all need this kind of relationship, and God provides it for us. We have a lifelong relationship with God that comes through trusting that he will provide that for us. But as verse 2 goes on to say, God provides the necessities of life. God thinks in terms of what his people need, not necessarily what they want or what they think that they need, but what they really need. And just like the shepherd thinks and acts in terms of his flock, so does God deal with us. He finds the green pastures and those watering holes. God provides for the daily needs of those who trust in him. And that's the key. Now, a shepherd doesn't take care of everybody's sheep just the ones that are in his flock. God provides for those who trust in him. And do you really believe that God does that? Is he your shepherd? It's tempting sometimes to kind of withhold your trust when it appears that your needs are not being provided for. I mean, we ordinarily do that with our, our business or other personal relationships. You know, if you don't get what you want, you hold back the next time. Or you go somewhere else where you do get your needs met. But can we do that with God? Have you ever said, I think I'm going to hold back my tithe this month because there are just so many bills to pay. I, there won't be enough money. God didn't provide enough. I really need to keep it this month. I confess to thinking that way sometimes. I haven't done it, but I've thought it. Do not boycott God. 
If he is your shepherd, he will provide for your material needs. Some way, somehow, he will provide. But you must trust him. Your tithe from your income is your show of your trust in God. If you're not tithing, you're not trusting God. And if you can't trust him, you can't really know what his provision is for you. But not only does God provide for the material needs of life, but he also provides for the moral necessities of life, as verse 3 goes on to say. As far as the shepherd analogy goes, this just means that the shepherd leads the sheep along the right path. He doesn't take them onto a road that would trespass onto someone else's property or a road that would create unnecessary danger to the flock. Sheep need supervision or else they get into trouble. And so the shepherd leads them along the right path. Well, spiritually speaking, God provides for us in the same way we sheep who often go astray. God leads us along the paths of righteousness. In these days of absolute and total moral confusion, how we need to understand that God has provided this for us. We desperately need His guidance. God has shown us the right way. What a wonderful provision that we have right here in His Word. We must take advantage of it, though. We must follow His leading. We must trust that what He has provided for us in His Word and by His Spirit will meet our needs. Otherwise, we just start going our way or start going the way of everybody else that we see around us, which is almost always the wrong way. Do you believe that God's way is best, the way that He's provided for you? He has shown you the path that is best for you to walk. And if you really believe that that's the best path, then you will walk it. If he is truly your shepherd, if you truly believe Psalm 23, then you follow the path that he has shown you. Even if it's totally different than what you see on TV or magazines or newspapers or internet articles or movies or whatever else is out there that says everything's all right to do, if God says no, then no. If God says yes, then yes. He has given us the moral necessities of life. Something else the Lord, as our shepherd, provides for us is strength through life, as we see in verse 4. The phrase there, the shadow of death, is actually just a single word in the original Hebrew. It's a word that is used 20 different times in the Old Testament, the word psalmavet. Literally, it means extreme darkness. It refers to the darkest valley, which we can all relate to as being life's most difficult and trying experiences, which we all go through. This valley is inevitable. It's something that we have to pass through. Now, now, sheep could be on the right path where the shepherd is leading them and following the shepherd, but they still have to go through a dark valley. We could be on the right path in our lives, living in obedience to the Lord, doing our best to follow his commandments, but still have to go through the valley of the shadow of death. When we say that the Lord will provide, that doesn't mean that he's going to remove us from this valley doesn't mean that God removes dangers and sadness and trials from our lives. But what it means is that when we go through these times, God promises to provide the strength that we will need to get through it, and he will remove the fear of it. Perhaps the most comforting words in Scripture could be summed up in those words, For thou art with me, King James Version. God is available. That knowledge alone can banish our fears. The shepherd used both a rod and a staff in his work. The rod was for defense, to defend off wild animals or other attackers. The staff was for control, you know, to prod the sheep along or to you know, grab one that was going astray. Well, God has a rod to defend us from what would take away our life and our reason for living. And that rod is that relationship that we can have with him through Jesus Christ, our good shepherd. And God has a staff to control us, to bring us back when we want to run away because sometimes we just get so afraid of what life has brought our way. And that staff is His Holy Spirit, which brings us comfort and enlightenment and, and guidance and self-control. Perhaps you're going through this valley right now. You feel that you're in the darkest of valleys and you are overwhelmed by worry or bitterness or anger or just heartache or fear. Do you believe this psalm? Is God your shepherd? Then he will provide. He will give you the strength that you need to get you through this time. And you can find tremendous comfort to be able to say, Thou art with me. 
you can have the defense of the Lord's rod and you can be under the loving control of his staff if you trust him to provide, if he really is your shepherd. Now scholars generally agree that at this point in Psalm 23, starting with verse 5, that David moves away from the shepherd motif and he talks about the Lord's provision for our lives in a different way. The theme of this psalm is still, the Lord will provide. But here the Lord is pictured as a host, offering hospitality to a friend. God not, God not only provides strength for those dark valleys, but also provides an abiding fellowship with him forever. Some believe that the table set in the presence of enemies refers to the custom in Bible days of a victory celebration after a successful battle. And at these victorious celebrations, the enemies would be present as captives and would have to watch as the victors celebrated. Well, after God provides the strength to take us through those dark valleys of our life, there is the spiritual victory that is sweet. And our enemy Satan is bound and gagged and we enjoy that wonderful fellowship that we can have with the Lord. A good host would not only set a table for his guest, but would also anoint his guest with oil and give more than enough food and drink. And when the guest would leave the hospitality of his host, those qualities of friendship would continue with him. They follow after him, and he does not forget the kindness shown to him by his friend. And we see that spiritual motif continuing in verse 6. And that part of the psalm shows us that our God, who is a gracious friend, who provides for our physical and our emotional and our spiritual needs, will stay with us. Those qualities of that friendship his support, his encouragement, his goodness, his mercy, his kindness. They will follow after us. They pursue us. They stick with us. If we will trust in the Lord as our provider, as our host, as our friend. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I shall not lack. Now when you think of all the pursuits of this world, all those things that are out there in the movies and television and on the internet, all the things that the world involves itself in, all the activities and the ambition of those who really don't know the Lord. It's all basically because they lack something in their lives. The cry of lost humanity is, I lack, I'm in want, I'm empty. And the message of this psalm is that anything that you could possibly lack can be found in a relationship with the living God. And the New Testament follows this up by saying that this relationship comes from trusting the person of Jesus Christ as Savior. So let me show you what I mean by that. The world is crying out, I lack rest. I'm worn out. I just need to rest. Psalm 23 says, He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He gives me that place of rest. But in the New Testament, Jesus said in Matthew 11:28, Come unto me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Jesus is the way to get that rest that we're all looking for. The world is crying out, I lack refreshment. I just need a little break, something to, to calm my nerves. Psalm 23 says, He leads me beside the still waters. He provides the refreshment that I need. And Jesus said how he does it in the verses of following, Matthew eleven twenty nine. 29. He said, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart. And you shall find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, my burden is light. The world says, I lack restoration. We've messed up this world and we don't know how to make it better. We just need to fix it somehow. Psalm 23 says, He restoreth my soul. God can make things better for your life. Jesus, who restored sight to the blind and health to the sick, promises that spiritual restoration for those who will seek it through him. He said in John 9, 39, I have come into the world so that the blind will see. He said that, of course, after healing a blind man, but speaking about so much more than just physical blindness, but the spiritual blindness that we would have without the Lord, that Jesus enables us to see. The world cries, I lack guidance. I don't know where to go. I don't know what to do with my life. I need a hero. I need to look to somebody to show me how to live. There's no one to show me the right way to live. Psalm 23 says, He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for His name's sake. And as Christians, we can know the New Testament fulfillment of that is that Jesus is our hero. He shows us the way to live. Just following His, his life and, and scriptures teaches us how to live in life. 
And also in John 16, 13, he also promises that he would provide his spirit to guide us into all truth. We have the guidance through our faith in Jesus Christ and his spirit. The world cries, I lack companionship. I need a friend whom I can truly trust. Ever notice all the, the buddy movies and all the TV shows that have all these great friendships? That's just a, a cry for humanity to, to demonstrate what it is that they're looking for. I need friends. Psalm 23 says, I fear no evil, for thou art with me. And as New Testament Christians, we can know that Jesus is the person that we can know as a friend. He said in John 15, 15, No longer do I call you slaves, but I've called you friends. You did not choose me, I chose you. Jesus chose us to be his friends if we would just accept that gift and his love for us. The world is crying out, I lack comfort. I need something to make all this hurt just go away. Psalm 23 says, Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. And the New Testament tells us that our comfort is found in Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians 1 says, The God of all comfort comforts us in all our afflictions. As the sufferings of Christ are ours in abundance, so also our comfort is abundant through Christ. The world is begging, I lack provision. Somebody just care enough to take care of me for once. Psalm 23 says, Thou dost prepare a table before me and anointed my head with oil. And Jesus reaffirms that commitment of God to care for us when he said in Matthew 6.33, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. The world cries, I lack satisfaction. I've tried everything, but nothing fills me up inside. Psalm 23 says, My cup overflows. And Jesus said in John 10.10, I've come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. What we need to be truly satisfied in life is, is found in knowing Jesus. And the world cries, I lack a home. I lack a place where I can belong and feel that I have this identity and I can just be at peace. Psalm 23 says, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And Jesus said in John 14, 3, I go to prepare a place for you, that where I am, there you may be also. The Lord will provide. The Lord has provided everything that we need in our relationship with his son, Jesus Christ. I know that you love this psalm. You can probably quote it by heart. Even non-Christians know this psalm and find comfort in it. But the key question is, do you believe it? The Lord has provided everything that you would lack without him. The Lord will provide. Let him provide for you. Commit your life to the Good Shepherd, and he will lead you through life's journey. Accept the invitation of our gracious host to feast at his table of blessing. And you, too, can say, I shall not want... If you feel that you're lacking any of these things, such as rest, refreshment, restoration, guidance, companionship, comfort, provision, satisfaction, or a home, a place of belonging, will you come to Christ, the great provider? And this Thanksgiving, may you truly know and believe that the Lord will provide. I hope that you have a blessed Thanksgiving, understanding this important truth of all that God has provided for you and what he promises to continue to provide. If you are missing these things you'd like to have, then we invite you to accept Jesus Christ as your own Savior.